I never had a pet in my life. And then all of a sudden, oh, you like to eat them off the ground. Here, have my hand. You know how you like those. And I was mesmerized by these birds. We've had these birds since probably 1981. See, when he gets his wings up, that means he's gonna fly. And it's no different than it was then. I still could sit there and watch them for hours. And then I was taking notes down mm -hmm. while she was saying, are you coming in for supper? <laughs> Do you ever wanna come to eat? Yeah. Do and you ever? Do you exist? How did the peacock farm come to be? Do you well, wanna start? Yeah. Yes, he gave me a pig when we were dating. And we called up Charlie. So when we got married, we took up with. And he grew to about 800 pounds. And then he died. We think he got struck by lightning. And then he said, what do you want next? And for some weird reason, I said, peacocks. And I'm glad you didn't say elephants. This is true. We didn't know anything about them. And then we found out when our first peacock, Junior, died, the vet said, Oh, she had a bad heart. And he, I said, she? He said, yeah, it's a she. I said, we thought it was a boy. He says, no, I hate to tell you, Junior is a girl. And I said, I got to study this. But nobody would tell us anything, so we learned firsthand. We wrote books. We wrote books, <laughs> and I wrote down everything I could. I took yep. every still shot. As the years went on, we got more and more birds. And then all of a sudden, I was substituting because we were out promoting our first Peacock book, which sold out our first thousand copies within the first month. They're like any other barnyard poultry. You feed them cracked corn. Uh, we have oats and wheat here. And we mix those up together and that's their diet. And they're the only bird in the poultry world that does not lay an egg and is sexually mature until their second and third year. A male will not have his full tail feathers until his third year. Now, if you were to have them, you have to make sure you have space for them. So you have to have a cage that's at least eight foot tall. I do admit that they are able to withstand the heat better than the cold, but they do well in 25 below zero temperatures, which we've experienced over the 37 years. Like other farmers, Dennis and Deborah Fett feed and water their livestock each morning. Among the goose and guineas are their pride and joy. The Fetts are peacock farmers. And this is where it all started the first TV we ever were on. At the minute the book came out. It actually started with Goosey. <gasps> yes, Goosey David Letterman. You like my left foot, don't you? In the mall in Council Bluffs, I went there and they had a TV thing. I said, hey, I got a goose that unties shoes. David Letterman was gonna put us on the show, but he said he'd only pay us $50 and we'd have to get our way to New York. And I said, well, we were kind of poor at this time. And so we didn't go. And then, once we got to this place... Peacocks are not as mysterious as everybody's led to The believe. big thing happened was Iowa Public TV, they came back in 1988 to film us for Take One series. So we lost our favorite pet, and then I was about ready to give it up, and I think Deb encouraged me. Said, and from then on in, people saw us all over the state, and then we were invited to, was it Davenport to be on TV? Yeah. We were invited to Kansas City. Yeah. And we did all the TV stations in Des Moines. We did stuff. We, we promoted our books at the Iowa State Fair. The wacky world of peafowl. That's what we're going to talk about today. I went over to the poultry barn this morning, Deborah. That's someplace you've been a number of times, right? Oh, yeah. We used to enter all the time. We got tired of winning, so we quit entering. Did you hear that? Poem? We did a promo for today's show. Yeah. Good morning, America. <laughs> Hi, I'm Deborah Bach. Hi, I'm Dennis Fett. We're here on our peacock farm in Minden, Iowa. Good, Good morning, morning, America! From the Minden, Iowa peacock farm, we know what a difference today makes. It was crazy, and it was just like... Constant. People found us, and I promoted, but I could never get that. It just, it just snowballed. Magazines, radio. Oh, yeah. I, I think we, we have a total of perhaps four hours of airtime of all our Peacock stories. I got a DVD of it. Mm -hmm. I was a music teacher. I started off as a band teacher in South Dakota, then came to Iowa, how I met her. We dated for three years and got married. Now, I'm a good clarinet player. I, I've taught for many years, but I'm not a songwriter. Mm -hmm. About 1989, we were at the Iowa State Fair, and we saw this gospel group on That's the right. Bill Riley stage. 
-hmm. And I was so inspired by them. Mm -hmm. And I went home that night after the fair and I woke up in the middle of the night and heard a song in my head. I went down, got my cassette recorder, I hummed it into the recorder, and the next morning I woke up, I said, I think I had a dream I wrote a Peacock song. <laughs> and I said, can you write words to this song? She says, yeah. And the next day she had words, and it is the Wacky Peacock song. Yep. On one hot and sunny day, our pet pig Charlie passed away. We flew out from Omaha, Nebraska to LaGuardia Airport with four peacocks. We did a seven minute segment where we talked about peacocks. We walked around the cage and we sang our peacock song. And from then on in, it was crazy. Oh, oh yes, we got peacocks. Lots and lots of peacocks. We got black shoulder, white, and India blue. Then I got invited to be on the animal planet, You Lie Like a Dog, where I was the peacock expert and the guy next to me wasn't. But you yeah. were on the Tonight Show. Well, yeah, we did the and Tonight Show. Show. This is from yeah. Minden, Iowa. Minden. Please welcome Dennis Fett. Dennis, come on out here. I got a call to say, can you play Jingle Bells on your clarinet in 28 seconds and take it apart where I have a disappearing clarinet? I said, yeah. Ooh. And they flew me out and I did it. And I talked about peacocks. They cut it out. But that's OK. Here we are, yep. I'm a YouTube guy now, and I love making videos. Are you ready? Yeah, Get so your, I don't... Got your clipboard? Yeah. You know what you're gonna say? No, nothing. Oh, you can't do that. I'm done. Okay, I, I'll figure it out. Mrs. Peacock, do you have some questions that our viewers sent from our channel? Yes, I do, and the first question is... When it started off, I didn't know anything about it. We were videotaping, I had an old-fashioned camcorder, VHS, and I was running around. I went from still pictures, which I love with our books, to video. Maybe I need the GoPro you this morning. You're gonna scream so I can get a good GoPro of you? I kept making videos and then I learned about YouTube, didn't know what it was, and I put videos up and had a Peacock video that's now almost two million views, Peacock yelling. And it's probably my worst video that I think I've ever taken, but the best part about it is, is Debbie's in the beginning of it. Trying to do a stand-up for one of our DVDs we made, and the peacock <laughs> wouldn't let her talk and hear her speak. And I put that in. Yep. Apparently, she always claims it's because of her, yes. and I, I agree. Of course. Welcome to Mr. Peacock and Friends. I wonder what Mr. Peacock will be doing today. Let's we, find out. We average about 29 to 30,000 views a month. I really don't care. I just make videos, and like I said, I'm an educator. If people find of an interest, fine. If not, who cares? <laughs> I grew up in a concrete jungle in Patterson, New Jersey, and I never thought in my dreams that I'd even have five feet of grass, let alone four acres of what we have here. It's peaceful, but it's fun to watch animals. Animals are so much fun. They all have their personalities. It's like a, a connection with the birds and wildlife and animals. Peacocks never paid the bill. After the book sales dwindled, that was it. By looking inside the egg during the incubation process, you can see what's really happening or not happening. That's, that's moving. I'm a teacher. I want to teach people about peacocks. I'm just happy to be retired, to be here on the farm and hear the peacocks yelling in the background and enjoying life. They're interesting. From a pig to a peacock to Who would books ever think? to songs. I mean, it's endless.